Storm Lake Times. We're the second smallest newspaper ever to win a Pulitzer. That brought Katie Couric to town. We're not out to cause trouble. We're just out to report the news. And sometimes that causes trouble. We really are interested in what the facts are and what the truth is. You can actually smell the Des Moines River. And we all know what the cause of it is. People care about that because they're going to care when their taxes go up. You print the truth and let the chips fall where they may. And if you don't do that, you sure as hell will go broke. I grew up 200 yards north of the lake. Had this childhood where you'd wander the lake shore all day long, spearing carp and fishing for bullheads, and uh, mom would tell you to don't come home until the street lights come on. Named after this body of water, Storm Lake, means everything to this community. It's what started us on our path toward the Pulitzer. Online. Well, I had been in the newspaper business ever since I graduated from college in 1972. Tried to buy the uh, existing newspaper and they wouldn't sell it to me, so I th started my own. My wife thought I was crazy, but she went along with the gag and uh, Art joined me a few months later. Dad called once, uh, we had a reporter who was leaving at the time. And he said, okay, why don't you work for a summer? I'm like, well, sure. And I loved it. I, I loved every minute of it. I wasn't used to the pressure, but at the same time, uh, you just learned a lot just about how the government works, about how the courts work, all that stuff. It's worked out very well for us, uh, probably because there's never been enough money to fight over. To work for a newspaper is an honor for me. I started taking pictures and I've evolved into a features writer and photographer. So around two o'clock it started to rain. Um, did that, did everybody leave after that or did they? I have an art degree and so I've done uh, some artwork for the paper. This was a story on Storm Lake as the highest minority ratio in Iowa. This is when there was a mystery in town. Somebody was cutting off the tails of horses. Here's a funny one. It's not really funny. Uh, the story was ministers want to ban strippers, but this ended up on the Jay Leno show, suggesting that these centenarians were the strippers. <laughs> it was an accidental layout. You know, maybe there should have been a little more space. We cover our immigrant population too, and I, get to, I took this picture at an event where immigrants spoke up about the, the uncertainty of what they're facing. They say that, that journalism is the first draft of history. So yeah, it's our obligation to record the world of Buena Vista County as comprehensively and accurately as we can and color it with our own interpretation on the editorial page. Uh, that's how we view it. There are various forms of opinion on the traditional opinion page in a newspaper. There's letters to the editor, there are guest essays by really smart people or really stupid politicians, and then there's the editorial and that's the view of the newspaper. What I try to do is use editorials to argue for the community to a higher authority, for example, to argue on behalf of Lake Dredging to the state. It's clear that we were losing our lake to Iowa soil. First we broke the prairie and that infiltrated the lake with sediment. And then climate change came along in the 1980s basically and started exponentially increasing soil delivery to rivers and streams and lakes. Our lake, which should be 26 feet deep in 1990, had an average depth of seven feet. So we started campaigning to get the lake dredged. And the Vilsack administration responded to that. But it got me interested in the other lakes in northwest Iowa, what we call the prairie pothole region, that were rapidly disappearing from sedimentation. I was taking pictures of places like Rush Lake and Pickerel Lake where they actually were planting soybeans on the lakeshore. 
and other lakes in Dickinson, Palo Alto, Buena Vista, and Clay counties, just to show people that they were there. These were once lakes. And now they've been converted into marshes to filter the flotsam from agriculture. Nitrate largely comes from either anhydrous ammonia or manures. So I took the photos to the Iowa Environmental Council in Des Moines, their annual meeting, and then Bill Stowe turned to me, the CEO of the Des Moines Water Works, and he said, we're gonna sue your county. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, we're gonna sue your county over agriculture because you're polluting our water supply in, from the Raccoon River. And I said, you're kidding me. He said, no, I'm not kidding. And so I ran back, drove back actually to Storm Lake from Des Moines and wrote this lead story with a two-deck stud horse bold headline saying we're gonna get sued and nobody paid attention to it. I sent Tom down and asked how are you gonna pay for the defense of this lawsuit and Tom asked the Board of Supervisors and, and they said well we don't know and so Tom asked them again and they said we have friends who will take care of us and we asked who are those friends and they said it's none of your business. It's none of the public's business. But wait a minute, we're the taxpayers of this county. We could be on the hook for this. Who's running our defense and who's pulling the strings and they wouldn't tell us? We found out through our own reporting that Monsanto was involved, the Iowa Farm Bureau, Deep Pockets, but we couldn't find out who all the donors were because they wouldn't release the list. We discovered that the donor list was being managed by the Agribusiness Association of Iowa, whose counsel at the time was Doug Gross, who was Terry Branstead's, uh, you know, main man. We had a suspicion, we had a tip that, uh, that he was the one who was behind AAI's legal defense fund. And so I just decided to call him, and he confirmed basically that he was the architect of it, he was the one who drafted it with the Secretary of State. So eventually, Randy Evans from the Iowa Freedom of Information Council was able to convince the County Board of Supervisors that these donors were public record under Iowa law. And so the supervisors dropped out of the illegal fund. But by that time, they'd already spent one and a half million dollars arguing this case. A judge then, about six weeks later, dismissed the Waterworks claim because drainage districts lacked standing to be sued because they had no authority other than to blow up beaver dens. So they won the lawsuit and we won the public records argument. Well, we still don't have this settled. We still have nitrate in the Raccoon River. The Des Moines Water Works still runs North America's largest nitrate removal system. Our entire state's wealth is built on this rich farmland and we're flushing it down the river. So what is the role of a newspaper is to say, hey, we're doing this. Hey, they're suing us over it. Hey, maybe we ought to pay attention to this. This was Time Magazine, um, his quote. I started screaming and he thought I had gone nuts. All of a sudden he jumped up hooting and hollering and he said we won and I said, what'd we win? So I just shot out of my chair and, uh, you know, started screaming and hurling epithets. You could tell Art is like, kind of like almost collapsing over the emotion. It was just pure elation. My thought was, this isn't the last time we're going to hear about this. This is from Japan. This is page one, and it opens backwards. We had received calls from two New York book publishers. I told them both, oh, forget it. I laughed, you know, no, I can't write a book. Yeah, I don't have a single idea for a book. And John, I hung up the phone and John said, call him back, tell him you got a book. <laughs> uh, tell him it's Storm Lake. <laughs> I said, okay. It gets into Iowa politics, immigration, agriculture and climate change, and how it all centers around this little rapidly changing rural community. Because of the Times Pulitzer, a lot of national and state media are finding out, hey, Storm Lake is a great community. And it, you know, it strokes our ego, we like it too. The reaction of the community, I think, was, oh well. A member of the Board of Supervisors wrote a letter to the editor saying that it diminished the value of the Pulitzers. But you know what? We printed that letter without changing a word. 
and we ran it at full length and we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Uh, if somebody calls us a son of a bitch, we'll print it. If, you, if you're foul enough, they'll print it right on the front page. They thought they could sell some papers. At least I would. I don't know what other industry does that.